some of the potential optimism can lie. Optimism comes for me for two things. One is the formation of online nation states. You see me talking a lot about community tokens and all of this stuff. You know, if you think of Bitcoin as an online nation state, that would be true. The moment that Facebook tokenize, they have their own system of money, they have their own rules, organization, three and a half billion people, it's the largest nation state on earth. This is why everybody's bloody terrified of Facebook having their own currency. We've created the foundations for nation states. And where this is all going is the metaverse. The metaverse is discovering the Americas again, or even a new solar system. If you think of the world as constrained by its own GDP because of humans, productivity, resources, the metaverse has none of that. There is a possibility that the metaverse allows people to earn incomes in a world free of the constraints. In this new world of crypto that allows us to create our own worlds in the way that we want it, and you can live in whatever world you want. We live in different worlds already, but sooner or later, I can be in a room with different people and they can be all around the world. We're going to a very, very different world. A full immersive metaverse experience is 15, 20 years away. We live in the real world, in this digital world, augmented reality, virtual reality. That's all coming. We know yeah. that. I think the central bank digital currencies are going to give governments an opportunity to fiscally stimulate in a way that's more fair. We have to go towards a UBI world, whether we like it or not, until we can replace that income by hmm. metaverse and other income. We're going to have deflationary forces on a gigantic scale. We've got the battle of getting crypto mainstream that governments don't over-regulate it. And we've got 20 years of a battle here. I mean, we're seeing the velocity of money in the new system by the rise of NFTs, right? Pure velocity of money going on. You know, people are spending money, selling things, buying things. In the regular world, it's not the same. And again, whether anybody likes it or not, because the nostalgia of the 1950s, of the current structure of the right, doesn't play to the young. That is likely to come. And I think that's the big fourth turning change that happens. The nation state ends up being your foundation layer and you can move. I don't just think we'll think about it very differently. The point being is this is where it's going and fast. Can nation states survive in this? Are nation states distributed? I don't know. And how are nation states when robots or the kind of, you're heading towards the singularity, obviously, in all of this. It's this period of the 20 years that I'm worried about. The easier it is to realize, stop waiting for the big bang, understand what the game is. The game is not what you want it to be. The game is what it is. This is why everybody imposes their politics on everything. I'm not sure what a deflationary world does to other aspects of being a human. Velocity of money could go to zero if you're not careful. Is how do you stop velocity of money going to zero? That's actually quite problematic. Because right now, as and I keep saying, is why would I invest outside of crypto? I cannot see anything that's going to give me that rate of return. You know, dirt up your house and buy a new car and stuff like that. It's interesting. Nobody's thinking that through. Well, the exponential age does mean that, that there is a chance that that stuff performs extraordinarily. So there is a chance that you can still continue to, to earn super normal profits. And I spoke to the Monetary Authority of Singapore two days ago, just interviewed somebody. Programmable money, they're all going to do it. So digital identity, I think, is going to become important because we're about to move into this metaverse world. And I think that's a great way of generating a capitalist version of universal basic income. Okay, now we've done this. And the other thing you know, I talk a lot about is tokenization of communities. That allows you to invest in culture and earn different forms of income. Digging stuff out of the ground, making stuff, including food and experiences, is all going to be digitized. Also within my macro framework, is everything digital goes to zero in cost of production. Technology is going to drive the cost of energy to zero. What does that mean for the world? Well, clearly it powers the metaverse. It got a bit cheaper in, in recent years because of fracking, because that was technology. Electricity is going to go to zero, however you generate it in the end. That's a shock, to, a positive shock to the world, of which I can't get my head around. So electricity costs go to zero over the next 30 years, let's say. And you've got less population, and your GDP per capita has probably gone up because the robots are doing the work. That's the problem here is... Do you create super, super ridiculous wealth? Um, how do you make sure that it's not even labor anymore? So that's, that's all good. But the problem is if somebody owns all the robots, they have all the power. That equation still has to be solved somewhere in this because the free market ain't going to solve it. It's going to solve it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Capital is now free and it's not going up. The cost mm -hmm. of electricity is going to collapse and it's not ever going up again. 
somebody's going to get immensely rich. Now, we can all invest in the exponential age. We can all have crypto where the power goes here. I get it in the metaverse. If we get Tim Sweeney's world, it's a nicely distributed place where everybody has a share of it. If it's Zuckerberg's world, and there will be many of these worlds, well, Facebook has the power. If they've replaced all mankind's productivity, how do humans get money? Well, we've figured they can earn it on the metaverse. But don't forget, AI works in the metaverse too. Bitcoin, fine. We use that as a layer. We've got the fallen electricity. We've got the uh, the accelerating technology. You know, if the world is being run by AI, can that be distributed? How does that work? In 20 years' time, yeah, we've got robot vacuum cleaners. In 20 years' time, we've got robot everything. So anybody who creates the best AI, like Renaissance Capital did it in financial markets, they take all the supernormal profits. So I can exist in three parts of the metaverse. I can be a man, a woman. I can be a animal and nobody needs to know but when you come to me and say are you real can i trust you with something i can prove it fear of technology because we're going through the largest technological advance in all human history at the fastest pace we've ever seen so that is going to shake society's foundations to its core it's going to get ugly for a while because people just fear all of this stuff generally what i've learned is humans tend to go from one to the other robots ai People can live to 150 years old. Also, that means that you're less likely to have kids. We're going to try it because that's where the world is going. And we're going to give that whole game a look. And now look at what we're talking about. We're going to change everything. And that software completely changed everything. A global pandemic of that magnitude with that much of an economic shock, and it not changed things for decades. I bring as many people on about the metaverse and all of this stuff so everybody can learn, right? It's a learning journey, free for everybody to just Join it.